Hello, hello. How are you guys? I'm so happy to be on here. I'm so happy to go live with Nile Rose, our dear friend. She's so amazing. We love her so much. Happy International Women's Day. We love you guys. Thank you for hopping on. Happy 222 p.m. Pacific time. Mm, what are you calling in right now? What are you manifesting? What are you praying for? You know, thank you for the hearts. It's so nice to see all you guys on. Mm, yes, send hearts. Um, if you guys can please share this live right now, share it with about 15 people. That would be so amazing. Um, I'm just waiting for Brooklyn Nile Rose to hop on. I haven't had my Shilaji today. I ran out, so bear with me. <laughs> Shilaji is like my coffee. <laughs> so, um, yeah, please share this um, live stream with about 15 of your friends and family. That would mean the world. We're going to be talking about the feminine energy, the masculine energy, women. Um, just starting off with giving so much love, so much gratitude to the feminine energy, to women. Happy International Women's Day. I love you guys. I love you women. You're all so beautiful to me. You're all queens in my eyes, in my mind, in my heart and soul. You're all queens, each and every single one of you. Um, I see you all as a powerful, powerful being. I don't care how old you are, how young you are, how big you are, how small you are. Um, I really truly see like true light in people in general. And for all you guys watching, I love you guys. Women wouldn't be who we are today if it wasn't for our men. We honor our men, we love our men. We love the masculine energy, the feminine energy. We need you guys, we need more men like you. More men like you, you guys, please keep shedding your love and light and wisdom to other men. We need more men like you. So thank you. Here she is. <sighs> she's, she's hopping up. There she is. Hello, queen <laughs> goddess sister. Sorry, I was having some Wi-Fi issues, but we made it. We made it, and we both have a beautiful background. Hi. <laughs> Yes, wow. you look fabulous as always. I am honored to be sharing this live with you finally. We have been planning this, and today is the perfect, and I mean perfect day. Absolutely. And um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I hopped on a little bit ago at 221, and I've been just starting off with gratitude. But why don't you go ahead and shed some good, loving energy and gratitude on this stream, on this live to, to the women, happy International Women's Day, to even our men. But right now, let's focus on our women. We have so much gratitude, so much love for you ladies. Thank you for showing up and being who you are. We see you. We see you. We see that crown. <laughs> yes, I just want to give so much light and so much love to the Divine Feminine every single one of you womb men watching you are so much more powerful than you know and all of the pain all of the trauma that the feminine the woman had to go through is for this present now moment all of that darkness is being transcended to light right now we are healing so much of humanity's wounds like we are doing the work together collectively. And in turn, we are balancing the masculine and feminine that has just been imbalanced for far too long. So thank you goddesses for doing the work. I know it's not easy. All of the feelings, all of the emotions. I mean, thank you. Thank you. We love you. We, we see you guys, ladies, we see you. 
We love you. There's yeah. a little bit of an echo. Is um is it something that maybe you could fix? If not, it's okay. It's not that bad. It's too much better. Um, let's see. It might be. Hi, thank you for the hearts, you guys. Thank you for hopping on. Please share this live with your friends, with your family, with other feminine, beautiful energy, the women, please send to your sisters, your brothers. Thank you so much. Um, we are the creators. Mm. You know? mm. We hold new life in us for nine months. <laughs> we have cycles once a month. And ours is very in tune. Ours is very together. <laughs> it's actually amazing. This is like perfect yeah. timing. And yeah. we're very intuitive. The more we hang around, we literally, our cycles link up. It's like nature's way of connecting. It's so mm -hmm. intuitive. I mean, since we've been hanging out, I know our cycles have linked. <laughs> I started, mm -hmm. my started hers yesterday. So it's like, Nature wants us to come together, guys. Like nature wants us to hold and have this container to create because that's what's happening right now. We are all coming together. All of the divine feminine goddesses are coming together to raise that vibration and bring balance. I want to ask you, thank you so much for sharing that, by the way. <sighs> so much love so much energy so much light is like filling up this live right now so guys thank you we have seven people on thank you for the hearts keep sending the hearts we love you and we see each and every single one of you yeah. um tell us a little bit about the history what the divine feminine and masculine and the imbalance of that yeah a great kind of segue into why we're celebrating this day like why does society give us this day you know, really think about it so and in my opinion i think we should be celebrating more than just one day and many of us do but it's a day to really bring a lot of awareness 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 <laughs> globally so globally we're coming together to remember so we're having this remembrance of all the times that the divine feminine hasn't been in their power and had their power taken from us and if you look at our history the pendulum has been far 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 on the masculine side for a very long time and what's happening and you see it in the feminist movement, right? When you let go of a pendulum, it swings really far the other way. And now we've gone into this like hyper feminist movement, which isn't really in balance either. <laughs> so if you look at our history, the woman, the woman holds a lot of creative energy because we are the creators. So we naturally have more intuitive power, more psychic ability, not to say that the masculine doesn't have that. It just comes more naturally to us because we are the bearers of life. We are the creators. We've all started as a woman in the womb. And then depending on your destiny, you either turn into a male human or you stay a female. So having that power um, can be a little scary to the male species who doesn't have this natural ability to bear life and is not the creator. Um, not to say, of course, source is the ultimate creator of all being all life forms, all the entire universe, but we do have this natural ability and we must honor that. And it's, it's happening now and it's a very exciting time in history. I saw that comment here and it is because finally the masculine, which is the logical left side of the brain, mathematics, science, is now becoming in balance with the feminine. And the feminine is like the flow, the elements, the nature, the emotion, art, poetry, all of this, all of this energy that, that lies here in our sacral, in our root chakras. This is the creation. This is our point of creation. And so because it hasn't been balanced for so long, the masculine was kind of threatened by this energy. <laughs> And so the patriarchy, the hierarchies, they pushed it down. 
And they made our power out to be a bad thing. And of course, all magic, you can, you can live in the dark, you can live in the light, but they made our wisdom, um, the word witch just means wisdom. <laughs> and women who had a lot of this power and who were truly in their goddess, women who embodied this were called witch. And it was made to be a bad thing. If you look at like Disney up until recently, the witch was like this ugly character who was out to poison you with an apple. I mean, that's just not what witch means. And it's been construed and twisted by our society. And now those societal conditions are breaking. We're breaking those patterns because we're now coming into our truth. So now this pendulum is swinging far to the left and it's going to come back and be in balance. And that's what's happening now that all of the pieces are coming together and no longer do we have to feel feelings of envy or jealousy or comparing ourselves to one another because that's what it was. You know, the witch, this character that society kind of made us out to be, these women in power, women who had healing abilities. We were made out to be like demonic and the devil was in us, you know? And really it was God, it was the light that was in us. And so a lot of crazy stuff had happened in history and women were hung, burned, drowned. I mean, horrible, horrible stuff, raped, molested, like it goes on. So all of that lives in our ancestral lineage. Wow. I what kind of trauma you've had in this life, it's lived on. It's in your DNA, it carries on. So we are breaking that domino effect. We are the light beings, we are the light workers. So these goddesses who are coming into our power, it's mm. a very important time in history because we are the ones who are like, no more, no longer. It's gone on for too long. We need both the masculine and feminine. We need the dark and light. So until the collective human consciousness lives in this balance and our kings honor their queens and vice versa, of course, but really honoring the mother and honoring our planet, Mama Earth, honoring the goddess. Honoring and that's happening. Happening. Yeah. It is happening. And it's, it's so happening. like... We see. are tapping more and more and more into our power. Mm -hmm. um, something that maybe was buried so deep, you know, from our childhood experiences, from our past lives, from history. I want you to touch up a little bit more about the word witch and just the meaning behind, the true beautiful meaning behind it, please. Yeah, the word witch is very triggering to a lot of people. Like I've done talks and workshops where they specifically ask me not to use the word witch and to me, if you look up the definition and the, the history behind this word, it literally means wisdom. Like, when are you ever like, oh, wisdom's not a good thing, you know? <laughs> to be wise is the ultimate, ultimate, highest, highest of compliments, you know? And wisdom is not something that, um, that you can really find or learn or even teach because the wisdom lives within our vessels, in, in our vessels, it lives within us, so it can't be found. And this is the thing, <laughs> and why I call it magic, is because it truly is. And when you go into nature alone, which in our, our ancestors used to do this, they would go, they would gather a bunch of women, and they would go in nature, and they would talk to the trees, they would kiss the leaves and the flowers, they would rub the plants on their skin and on each other and we would be naked frolicking in the forest and just like living our yes. Yes, and this More is that. What, yes, this is what the woman is. This is what a true witch is. She uses mother nature. She utilizes all of the abundance that mama earth, our planet provides. Like she, everything is medicine. Everything that she gives us is medicine. And the witch knows how to make potions or tonics, like I like to call them, and, and heal. Because nature is the ultimate teacher. Like I will go in nature 
anytime I get and be naked and just hug the trees and swim in the water and breathe in that fresh oxygen that our trees are giving us. And that is where I get my wisdom. It's not a teacher of anyone except for nature because nature is source. Nature is God, the universe, that is us. And the woman is so closely, um, has a very intimate, sensual bond with nature because we are the creators of life. So that imprint is so close, like the fingerprint is so close. So word which <laughs> really just means wisdom. Yeah, I'm gonna actually, what, this is leading into the next um, topic um, for just everything you're talking about, you know, with the rose ceremonies, the flower mm -hmm. ceremonies, the yoni eggs. I'm actually gonna grab a couple of yoni eggs. Hold on one second. Yeah, what what she was just doing, rubbing the leaves on your face, like that is so thrilling, guys. If anybody has any roses, flowers, flowers are amazing because the rose, if you look at a rose, it looks like a pussy. I mean, it looks like our womb. It has these layers, it's soft, it's sensual, it's sweet. It literally embodies the divine feminine. And so mm -hmm. take beautiful energy of something like a rose and just rub it on your auric body, just rub it on your skin, your face, and and really connect with nature in that way. And you'll you'll get downloads, you'll get wisdom, you know, from the goddess. There's so many ways for us to connect um, into our chakras, um, our root chakra, you know, something that was buried. We have shame around. Mm -hmm. um, my One of my passions is sharing and talking about things like yoni eggs, um, burning pictures, burning letters, having ceremonies, letting go of what no yeah. longer serves us anymore. The more we tap into our power, the more we can let go of what isn't serving us anymore, right? So we have yoni eggs, the rose blessings, burning pictures, even our women's cycle, honoring our cycle. There's so many women out there who, you know, just drink, um, ibuprofen with they just chug ibuprofen down into their stomach to numb the pain um but really just tapping into it like eating clean eating healthy three days at least before your period so that you won't hurt and connecting more to it um all of that is self-love self-care self-healing um so why don't you share with us actually first and then i'll talk about the yoni eggs about what you do as far as burning letters, burning pictures. Yeah, well, before that, something really resonated when you talked about our periods and how we can control our pain because we're constantly controlling our reality. So what's happening, like, because of all this pain in our ancestral lineage, all of this rape, all of this burning at the stakes because we're wise women and being drowned, like, all of this horrible stuff that's happened to women it, it lives within us. And so as we're shedding that lining, like your period blood is so sacred because it's this beautiful liquid that is made to, to mm -hmm. house and nourish a fetus. Like this is literally, it's liquid gold. Like it's, it's there to help create new life form, a new human that is bearing in your womb. So when your body gets the memo that you're no longer pregos, it starts shedding that lining and you can utilize this. So you can do things like rubbing it on your face or painting with it. And um, this will actually, women have said, and I've, I've witnessed it myself, like my cramps do not hurt as much as they used to because instead of dreading the period, the masculine came up with the tampon, you know, it was like a man said, oh, just plug it up, you know, and we used to free bleed on the soil. It was a good thing. It actually helps the plants because of all the vitamins and minerals and stem cells found in our period blood. So this stuff is amazing. And instead of just plugging it up and, you know, acting like we're not going through so much, we're going through an entire hormonal change, like every single month. So instead of ignoring that and acting like it's not there and trying to act like it's not a big deal it is a big deal 
It is a big deal every month. We go through a lot a roller coaster of emotion. Our progesterone, our estrogen, our testosterone all changes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that creates a mental shift. And in when you start celebrating your moon cycle, um, like our ancestors, they would gather in the forest around their moon cycle. And they would all do these rituals together, burn rituals, they would create new recipes, they would forage, they would really just come together and create. Mm -hmm. That's the energy that happens. And, and we would celebrate our moon blood. It was a good thing. It was tribal. We would dance and we would just be wild women because we are wild Woo! women. <laughs> Tap into your queen. If someone yeah. asks you, how are you? Say, you know what? I have cramps today. Mm. It would be nice to have a massage today. Yes. You know, don't be ashamed of your period, of your cycle. Honor it. Be proud of it. Be, be loud about it. I tell people all the time, you know what? I'm totally bleeding right now. You can say it however you want. Just honor who you are and don't be ashamed of it. And for any of you ladies who have the Diva Cup, the Organic Cup, I do recommend adding some water with your blood and watering your plants with it. Because like you said, Nile Rose, that there's so many minerals in our blood. It's a beautiful thing, you know, and share with us about your, your mask that you like to make. Yes. Yes. I started doing this pretty recently, only a few months ago. So I can personally tell you from my experience, it's been amazing. So you can mix it with anything. I like to put a little bit of honey, raw honey, and a little bit of either rose essential oil or a little bit of lavender. And the first time you do it, you put it on your face as a mask and you just let it sit. The first time is really special because something happens. And what's happening is you're cutting ties to those old patterns. You've been told that like, it's gross, don't touch it you know, like, yuck, it's blood, it's germy, like, none of that is true. If you're a healthy woman, you're eating healthy, especially, you don't have any um, kind of serious diseases, your blood is really amazing. And it has these things like stem cells, which are the blank canvas cells. So these are cells that literally are, are blank, they can create new life, they can heal. And if any of you have heard of like the vampire facial, that's what it is. Right. There's stem cells um, or different blood cells from your own, they'll inject it from you and take it and put it on your skin with a bunch of little needles. So this is like monthly, you can do a DIY vampire facial, but it's so much better because it's coming from your womb, which is your creative house. It's that chakra that houses all of that creative energy. So I, do you feel oh. different when you have this mask on you? How do you, how does your skin react to it? Like share yeah. I mean, the skin is one thing. Like, of course you notice a glow right away. You, you notice like pore tightening. You actually feel it. That's part of what the stem cells are doing. Like just tightening the skin, anti wrinkle. I mean like ultimate beauty stuff, which is great. Like we all want to glow. Of course, as queen we are, but something happens even deeper. Like, to our emotional body and it is so healing like the first time i did it it was kind of like ew this is gross it's gonna smell and then i did it and i was like actually it smells lovely <laughs> like there's nothing nasty about it and i've just been conditioned and so when we break that that societal conditioning something so magic happens and now like like you said i look forward and i celebrate this time of the month I mean, this is like an amazing chi. It's life force. We're it's releasing. We're edit. letting go of what Edding. you know yes. no longer maybe serves us. It's like the eggs that were inside of us because you know us females we get pregnant and that's what we do and we have babies and we create new life and we give birth and we carry babies for nine months. So. You know, when it's time for that, we release the eggs, we let it out, we let it go. So it's, it is a beautiful thing and we should honor it way more. Yes. Utilize that medicine. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm going to go get my obsidian egg. I have my, my rose quartz right here. So give me one second. I'll be right back. Oh, trying this since you told me about it. So I'll put the egg. Um, 
a rose quartz one. It's just a like a medium sized one. It up my pussy as I am going to bed, and you're absorbing all of that energy for six to eight hours, however long you're sleeping. And you wake up quartz is so healing. So if you think of like some some pills you can actually put up your butthole or your pussy and it's because it absorbs it absorbs right to the source it's going into your vessel and you know depositories are are very common because it's going straight to the source yeah exactly so i don't know i can't find my obsidian it was my first yoni egg ever but um right now the universe just wants me to talk all about the rose quartz because <laughs> we're in our heart right now we're yes. uh, we're filling our heart chakra. So hello to everyone who's joining. Hi, Jag. Hi, everybody. Sarah, thank you all for staying on. Nedda, we love you so much. Um, happy International Women's Day. Women, we see you. We honor you. We love you. We love you so much. Yes. You know, we're just touching up on just honoring the women, you know, our moon cycles, just everything, all of the above. And I want to share a little bit about my rose court. This is um, a stone that I got off of shock rubs. And these are my little yoni eggs. They're different sizes. My first one I ever bought was the obsidian. It was a size large, so it's a little bit bigger than this. Women, if you're barely starting off with yoni eggs, um, it's better to get bigger ones and then go down to smaller ones. Um, you would think opposite, but you know, it's good to get a bigger one so you could fill it, you could hold on to it longer, do exercises with it. And then once you start building more muscle and getting better and stronger, you can use the smaller eggs. Um, so, you know, growing up, I just, I do remember trauma. I remember my family fighting a lot. You know, I had two older brothers, like 15, 16 years older. So when I was a baby, they were all into the Grateful Dead. And, you know, they're all deadheads. And they, you know, smoked weed. My dad would kick them out of the house. Just so many memories of trauma um, fighting. And, you know, naturally your body wants to protect you, tighten up, you know, secure you. Um, so growing up, I just felt very disconnected to some chakras, to my root. Mm -hmm. And I started using, I started looking up um, just stones and yoni eggs because I heard about it and I found Amber Leeds, she's on Instagram, and I found people like Layla Martin um, in chakras, that's where I get some of my stones, Love. Layla Martin. <laughs> and they are like our age, a little older and or younger. And they talk about just expressing your true loving self and, and, and it's okay, you know, if you aren't connected and these are ways to get connected. Um, and I don't even know what else to say except for I'm just so grateful. So women, if you are feeling numbing to the vagina, if you are feeling ashamed, if you want to let go, if you want to feel more love, if you want to feel more down there, exercise, do whatever you want carry these eggs inside of you this one right here you could insert it and it gets all the walls because of the curve so you just go in there and you're just giving love because this is the the rose quartz you're giving so much love to the inside of you you know something that maybe we didn't do growing up we were so afraid we had trauma whatever you're going in there and you're just saying hi like, I love you. I see you. I'm here with you. I'm connecting with you. If you feel pleasure, yay. Use, you know, coconut oil, whatever it is. Charge your stones and just connect to your womb. Connect to your root, who you are. You are a queen. And these are beautiful ways honoring your period, honoring your pussy, honoring your flower, having rose ceremonies, letting go um, you know, burning your letters and pictures. What do you have to say about um, the yoni eggs? Because I know you just started as well. Uh, I think even just getting used to a lot of women, like will whisper pussy or like they, they don't even know how to really like say our own parts. I mean, say it, say pussy, like whatever words, yoni, what I don't personally like vagina, but some people think it sounds eloquent, <laughs> whatever it yeah. is. Like, 
saying these words and get comfortable with them and own them. You know what I mean? Okay. When, when I first started doing the yoni eggs after meeting you, I was so surprised. Like I, I never had problems getting wet like that, but I was so surprised that when I took it out, it was like, I don't even want to say turned on on a new level, but I just felt so sensual and so in my body and so like in tune with who I am that I could really just practice like my Tantra sex and Tantra meditation, like on a whole new level. So it was amazing. Yeah. I have nothing to say about good things. I've only used the rose quartz, um, which I know very heart, heart opening. A lot of my trauma has been around the heart and opening that chakra. So that's been really healing for me. So I imagine that resonates with you um, can be really, really powerful. Ooh, yes, I absolutely love it. I'm going to keep buying more. Um, I highly recommend the obsidian, you know, to let go of things. Obsidian is a beautiful stone. Um, I recently got a jade um, dildo. It's just like this one, but it's just straight. And it's just telling yourself you love yourself. You know, that really is what it is. And I remember you know, someone in my family was like, what are you doing? Like, why are you, you know, talking about this? And it's like, <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna <laughs> let go of that because there's, it's so much deeper than maybe talking about a dildo. It's, it's so many women don't use um, rubber dildos or whatever. They use these stones to connect back to who they really are to feel powerful again. Um, so yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, that's a great point is like a lot of the societal conditioning we've been talking about on this live is exactly that. I mean, that's why we're not comfortable talking about rose quartz dildos. That's why our family is, yes. whoa, why, why are you doing that? You know, it's, it's a very natural thing. And like specific, specifically with the dildos, this is your chi, this is like energy that's coming out of your palms. And you can send things when you do Reiki, when you say thank you to your food, always put your hand over it like this because this is where the chi and the energy comes from so when you're holding that dildo you're sending whatever affirmations to yourself through the womb so not only are you yeah. the power of the crystal which is just earth but you're also being able to send like a messaging you're able to reprogram your vessel as a woman and rewrite your story get rid of that trauma shed it you know what i mean like a snake so, so beautiful. Me like, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. I love it. Um, I want to ask you what it means for you to you to rise back into your power. And for ladies who are on and men too, whoever feels called, please leave us a comment. What it means to you to rise back to your power. What can you do? Um, today we're honoring the woman feminine energy we're honoring us being queens we are powerful we are amazing um we are orgasmic um we have pleasure we we are pleasure women who just you know we could put on makeup we don't have to put on makeup we get our nails done we we're bossy bitches we're powerful we're loving we're patient um so what does it mean to you to step into your power um and rise keep rising yeah it's a really good question because i think as women we go through these cycles i mean no pun intended like our moon cycle really going through different hormone cycles we every, PMS, yeah. every day we're kind of different because we have a totally different hormone balance and hormones make you feel a Way. So testosterone is like when we're in our power boss mode, we have more testosterone. When we have more progesterone, we're kind of just like, mm, I just want to curl up on the couch with some tea and a blanket, you know, and then estrogen can be a little bit of the PMS one, but it can also just make you really in tune with your emotions and have really high emotional intelligence. So all of these hormones kind of have superpowers. And when you come into your own, you, you start becoming more aware aware of your vessel, aware of what's going on. Like I am so aware of what I need now that I am coming into my power. And I don't want to say I fully have because 
the trajectory of growth never ends. Like there's no, okay, I'm there, you know, like it's, it's constant. We're constantly evolving as beings, all of us, but especially women, we continue to blossom. And so those moments in the winter when like the trees have no flowers and they're looking ugly and brown, you know, and they look like they're dead. They are, they, they have died, but they're dying so that they can birth new life in spring. And that's exactly like what we have to do. We go through these cycles of letting stuff go so that we can blossom. And like each one of us is just such a unique flower. Like rather than feeling and comparing our power against one another, just celebrating that we all have such unique gifts to give and just celebrating every single petal and its unique special beauty. Um, when I started coming into my power, it felt like my soul was embodying a different vessel. Like I didn't recognize myself and it's a very um, slow process, mm -hmm. but now looking back, I actually watched a video of myself three years ago and just the way I spoke, the way I looked, the way I chose my words, my energy, my auric body, everything was different. And it's a good thing to kind of look back and be embarrassed in a way, because that means you're growing. And that means you have come into this beautiful power, this wisdom, your witch, you know, you're, yeah. you're embodying that more and more because you're calling that into your universe. And for me, a lot of that was shadow work. A lot of that was like going deep into my wounds and not being scared. My throat chakra was huge, opening my heart even more and more and not caring, like not wearing makeup and not caring, you know, if I have a blemish here or just going out into the world and speaking my truth and saying like, hey, yeah, I used to be this dark person or I used to have a lot of darkness in me because of my trauma and my wounds as a woman and all the things I've been through in this life as a child and not being scared of the judgment, not being scared of how others will react, just truly embodying the self. Because we have to remember and we're not our past. Our past is yeah. not the present moment. And a lot of us still feel resonant with it. It's kind of like an old home, <laughs> kind of like, mm, you know, you can talk smack about my old home or you can, you know, if somebody yeah. went, old home and took something you wouldn't care because you no longer live there anymore you know right so. and a beautiful way to just do shadow work honor yourself and um, really look at yourself in the eyes and and truly love the things that you maybe don't love about yourself is i really recommend uh for men and women for women and men to get a mirror and just go in your house, in your room, somewhere where you feel safe, comfortable, get naked and really just look at yourself in the mirror and look at the parts that you're not comfortable about and really honor those parts because your body has brought you exactly where you're at today. And, and it's so powerful because we have the power to transform whatever we want to transform, to change, to create something new. We have all of that within us. So really falling in love with your body, with yourself, with your heart first is number one. Getting a mirror and staring at yourself, lighting sage and truly letting go, doing it on a new moon, full moon energy, uh, doing it on your cycle when you're bleeding when you're in pain, when you're hurting physically, mentally, spiritually, look at, look at yourself in the mirror and truly honor yourself. Even when you don't want to is a beautiful way to release shame, to heal and to fall more in love with yourself. Yes. I couldn't agree more. Um, yes. <laughs> I have a little mirror on my altar and there are times like I don't want to do it. You know, like, I don't want, I don't feel like doing that. I don't feel like facing those parts of myself right now. But those are the times, especially, that you come out so much stronger. And that's the shadow work. Like, look at yourself and cry. Look at those mm. parts that you don't like, those parts that you're ashamed of or embarrassed of, the parts that you cringe. Just look at yourself in the left eye, because this is the eye of light, and mm. just there long enough, everything will start to blossom and things fade. 
all of a sudden yep. those parts of yourself that you didn't like become the parts that you love. And I know it sounds crazy just starting out. You're like, oh my God, no, I'll never love this mom pop or I'll never, like it starts to morph and change and you become your most true form of a human. And it's so beautiful. And it's just consistency, really. That's, that's all it is. <laughs> yeah, it really is. It really is. Um, for me, what it is to rise back into my power each and every single day is honoring what I'm requesting for myself. And instead of being like, oh, well, here's an excuse, or maybe if I do this this way, truly knowing what you want, what you desire, who you're calling into your life and all the temptation around it. You know, we could get so tempted to do things um, that maybe isn't right for ourselves, but at the moment we feel like it is. So for me, what it means to tap back into my power to rise, to keep growing, to keep falling in love with myself is, you know, writing down what I'm calling in, writing down what it is I need and want and honoring that and sticking to that and really seeing my temptations, seeing it eye to eye and saying, I'm so in love with myself, my future self, my now self and my past self that I'm sticking to my word. That's, that's what I'm going to be focusing on to rise back into my true, true power. So I just wanted to share that with you. If anybody else wants to share what it means for them, what they want to do or going to do, um, to tap, to keep tapping into your queen, into your power, please share. Oh my gosh. I love that. I, I've been just, what you can do is kind of imagine that higher self, that highest priestess self. And you can imagine her kind of being right here in your crown chakra. Like imagine her face. What does it look like? How, how are the subtle differences different than your face in this now present moment? And you can look and, and imagine what is her life like? What is, what does she feel like? What is her mood? You know, and then you can really just embody that. And then that time, because time is the ultimate projection <laughs> and perception, you can change your perception and you no longer have to like wait. I used to tell myself all these stories like, oh, well, you know, once I lose, once I get to the weight I want to be, then I'll, I'll be happy or then I can embody my goddess and then yeah. I can want to do like, they, we don't have to wait. There's nothing we have to do. We can be her right now. We can be our highest form right now. And when you start feeling it like even on a day I have days when I don't feel beautiful you know and those are the days it's most important to say thank you so much for my beautiful x y and z whatever you're feeling insecure about because then you're changing that reality you're calling it in quantum physics physics like a magnet and now you are aware of it and now you're talking to your body and your cells will literally change <laughs> right that high priest is self, like, what does she look like? Just be her now, present moment. Exactly. Yeah. And um, Neda said something very beautiful. And I want to share because it resonates to what I wanted to share is setting healthy boundaries. Don't ever be afraid or ashamed of saying no to something, somebody, um, you know, it could be any type of situation, you know, if someone's asking you for a car ride at 1 p.m. when you're or 1 a.m. and you want to just go home. No, like really tapping into your queen, your your power, your king and um, setting very healthy boundaries and speaking loud of it. Um, you know, there's been so many times where we are in these situations where we're uncomfortable. So really just owning your power and your light um, because mm. you love yourself, right? We, I think we all really truly just need to want to and have to love ourselves. And that's what's going to get shift going. It's going to put us more and more and more into our vortex. So <laughs> that yeah, poor healthy boundaries is beautiful. Yeah. Because you know, once you, you the more you keep just loving yourself, the more just uh, things are going to come to you. You're going to meet the people that you need to meet and do and opportunities are going to come. And when you're mad and uh, unhappy um, and you, you're, you're thinking in the past, like opportunities, you know, things aren't going to come to you like they should be um, because we deserve all of that and, and we deserve life. 
Yes, 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 yes. Thank you so much, Netta, for sharing that. That was beautiful. And it's definitely important. I think a lot of women have been told to hush, to be quiet, to not have a voice, not have an opinion. I know I've certainly felt like that in this life amongst others. <laughs> and I remember it's like it's in our lineage as well. So even if you haven't personally felt this, your lineage as your ancestors have, and so to put up those boundaries and have your voice, that is taking back your power and that's owning it. And when we say power, don't think of it like king and queen power to like do whatever they want to the empire. It's more of like this innate wisdom and the same power that like mama earth has when she sees that there's a lot of pollution, she'll create a windstorm to just move it. That's the type of power that we're innately talking about is that intuitive mother nature, mama power that lives within this creative energy that is the woman. <laughs> mm, thank you for sharing that. Yes, yes to all of this. This is so special. Once again, happy International Women's Day. Um, thank you, Nara Rose, for like messaging me earlier and being like, hey, do you want to do a live, go live for Women's International? I was like, today is that day? Oh, my God. Yes. And I just went crazy. I just felt called to honor all the women in my life who I see on Instagram, Facebook, social media, um, in person, my, my family, my friends. Um, I think we should close this with a beautiful like guided meditation um, that you could you can lead if you feel called to. I know I led my first guided meditation um, recently and I really channeled you, Niall Rose. So thank you for being an inspiration to me in my life. Please, you guys follow uh, Niall Rose. Um, her name is I of the Nile, right, on Instagram? I have the Nile with a Y in Nile. Beautiful, yes, thank you so much. We love you. We love all of you guys. Thank you for staying on. Thank you so much. Yeah. So much love. Mm, let's do a collective OM together. OM. Mm, the breath great way to let go of anything we're holding on breathing in through the nose letting some chest out melting into the got the line here <laughs> Lioness, yes. Mm. Mm. Just think, feel how connected you are in this present moment to Mother Nature, the creator, the ultimate giver of so much abundance. And the only thing she asks back is respect. The only thing she wants for her love in return is love back. And this, this is the infinite energy and potential of the woman. The woman is planet Earth. She is the creator. She is the ocean. She is the wind. She is the fire. And she is the Earth. Honor every single ancestor Imagine your grandmother, your great-grandmother, and her great-grandmother all lined up behind you, all the way back to the hunter and gatherer era, just a line of women cheering you on, rooting for you, empowering you, hoping that you will follow your guides and your mission to heal this planet, this beautiful planet that we live on and call home. They are here to support you. And we are all here to support one another on this journey. Because the more parts of you you heal inside this vessel that houses your beautiful soul, the more in turn we heal all women around the world. 
we are one, we are collectively connected on a human consciousness level. That resonate with you. Feel them as your spirit guides and guides leading you through this maze that life sometimes can be. Fully surrendering, fully opening the heart, letting in all unconditional love, all light until we become it. There is light to our left. There is light to our right. There is light behind us. There is light in front of us. There is light below us. And there is light above us. We are light. And your entire vessel filled up with gold and light. Breathe into the heart. Feel your goddess. Tell her you love her. Think. See her as the little girl and see her as the woman she is yet to have become. Thank you. Thank you. Love you guys. We love you girls. We see you. We honor you. We need you. This is the year of letting your uniqueness shine bright. This is the year of community. For so many years after this, community and uniqueness, let it shine bright. Don't be afraid to let your king and queen shine and come out every day like they want to. Own it, love it. Mm, yeah. We're here, we're watching you, we see you. Happy International Women's Day. We love you, women. You're doing big things, you're doing it. We yeah. are here, we are now. We see each other, we empower each other. Mm. There is no jealousy, there's just love, <laughs> confidence, friendship, support for one another. I love you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you for being on my live. I love you, Niall Rose, so much. <laughs> Thank you, gorgeous queen. Mwah. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye, world. Bye, world. Miss you already. <laughs> love you.